Hello. I am Rachel, teacher, healer, and mystic. Um, so I'm doing my monthly webinar, um, 11.30 morning in the morning on, um, on a Friday over here in the UK. I hope you're all well. Um, this month, I'm going to talk about dowsing because it's come up a huge deal. Um, this is going to be very basic, um, but getting the principles right. And I think for a lot of people, when they do dowsing, they maybe haven't been taught or they haven't got the principles right because it's something that's very, very easy to pick up. Um, so I'm going to talk about etiquette. I'm going to talk about the basic principles of it um, and a few other bits and pieces that are going to help you get a firm footing so that when you use this, um, you're doing it the right way. Um, and you're less likely to get mistakes or mix ups because these are tools. These are tools which are very simple tools and it's very easy for them to um, become interfered with and, and all of that type of stuff. So it's something that I want to instill knowledge so that you can come away going, I'm empowered and I know how to work with this. And I know how to use it. So I'm going to do a more in-depth lesson on next Thursday in Real World Spirituality. Um, if any of you guys are part of Real World, then you'll be getting that as part of your package. If um, you are not part of our world and you like this lesson and you want to come along to get a firmer foundation in some of the more um, like more advanced principles, then Thursday you're really welcome to join us. The first week is free and then at the moment it's only £20 on a rolling contract thereafter. Really easy to cancel as well, like you're in total control of the contract. So um, that's a weekly um, meeting, catch up, um, talk, lecture, healing session, coaching session, um, spiritual discussion, whatever it is that comes up um, and, and we deal with everything. And you've got two teachers in there as well as guest teachers as well. So it's a really, really fab, genuine, real community. That was online before it was fashionable to be online. The other thing that um, I will talk about, but I won't go into a huge amount of detail, is to do with chakra dowsing and to do with dowsing for your own personal health. That's something that I cover in more detail when I do a week on is it a week on Saturday now, um, I've got my crystal healing practitioner course with David. So um, David, who's the West Berkshire witch, and myself um, are teaming up, doing our first face-to-face -face, um, workshop together in about, oh my God, is it like two years or something? Probably is. Um, and that'll be the crystal healers practitioners course where we're, we'll practically hands-on show you um, as part of the whole day, how to use the dowser um, as part of the, the healing process. The other thing is um, that even though that's face to face, um, we are about an hour away from London by the train, um, really easy access of the M3 and the M27. So even if you're not local, we'd really love you to join us for that day's workshop. So if this kind of like whets your appetite and you think, actually, I want to know a little bit more, then there's a couple more avenues that you can go through and you know that you're going to be learning from somebody who's experienced, somebody who's um, learned the hard way, all of that type of thing, um, and somebody who's got a firm knowledge in what they're dowsing for, not just what they're dowsing. So this is a big mistake that people make is they douse without knowing what they're really dowsing and not having any knowledge about what they're dowsing for. Um, so things like spell work, um, health, all of that type of thing. If you haven't got a knowledge of energy centers, of the chakras, um, then it's very difficult for you to interpret the information that you're receiving. Dowsers are really, really simple. They're literally yes, no, and I kind of get a maybe with mine as well um, type of a system. So they're very, very simple, which is why they're easy to use, but it's also why you have to be so careful with how you word the question. The most important thing is how you're gonna word the question. If you're forcing them to make a choice between a yes and a no, and you haven't, um, and, the, and it's phrased in a way where actually it's neither of those options, you might end up getting a, a false yes or a false no, because out of those two options, your dowels is gonna choose one, and it's gonna go, uh, I don't know. The other thing is that this tunes in from your higher self and maybe some information which might be in the room or the vicinity for it to read. So, for example, I use it with maybe some books or um, 
um, like herbalism, like trying to work out what herbs I need to work with, you know, when I may be creating crystal grids, which crystals I need to work with, which essential oils I need for a blend, um, when I'm working on energetic purposes. So, you know, if I've, I've said to my dowser, which essential oil do I need? out of my collection and I've gone through my collection, that's fine, but it might be that there's another essential oil that I need to use in the blend, which I don't have. My dowels is not coming to tell me there's also actually something better out there. So it depends on how connected you are into your higher self, um, how connected you are into your authentic self and how um, connected you are into your journey as to how much information you're gonna receive from the ether, if that makes sense. Um, if you're somebody who's an experienced channeler, who is a meat trained medium, trained psychic, um, trained channeler. Um, I believe that everyone has to have some sort of training where you should be sat in circle and taught the ropes because that's when mistakes happen. Um, many of us find that our talents come easily and that's beautiful um, and it's really, really wonderful. But just as um, the wise woman or the wise man in the village or in the town would have plucked out the gifted children and you would have gone to them for a lesson once a week or maybe even gone in um, into service with them. Everyone needs to go through an apprenticeship period. That's just how it works. It doesn't matter if you're sat in circle, if you found a teacher, you know, be careful who your teachers are, check their credentials. Um, you know, all of that stuff. Check out my credentials. Does she know what she's doing? Has she got any qualifications? Okay, yeah, it's just a piece of paper, but still, it's a piece of paper which shows that I've done my training. Hi, Claire. And it's very difficult in the world that we live in where everything's online, where for us to kind of go, oh, um, I, I, you know, anyone can put anything on the internet, check out what they're up to and what their qualifications, their experience and their credentials are. So like I said, it's a really simple yes, no system. When you get your dowser, the first thing that you want to do is to cleanse it. So cleansing, for me, the best way is to kind of do that out on the earth, maybe leave it out there in the sunshine for a couple of hours, um, out there in the moonlight overnight, that type of thing. But <laughs> my dowsers are spinning around happily because that's a favorite thing. Um, I am friends with all of my dowsers, and I'll talk to you in a minute about different, why well, you might have different dowsers for different things. So you then would want to imbue your dowser to yourself. Any new crystal that you get, work with me to my best personal interests, that's your humanity, and my highest good. That's your spiritual pathway. Your highest good is always going to serve everybody else as well. But as a human, you need to recognize that you're an independent being from other people. So you've got that balance of humanity and spirituality. You want to imbue it to yourself. You might want to carry it in your pocket. You might, you can charge it up by spinning it. You can charge it up in the sunlight. Um, you might find that um, depending on the crystal, as long as it's not crystal like a gypsum type, which you probably wouldn't want for a dowser, but some of the softer crystals will melt with water, cleanse it in spring water. Um, you know, you can go to the shop and buy like a bottle of spring water and just cleanse it, your crystals and your dowser in that and then imbue it to yourself so it's yours and it wants to work with you and it's happy. Um, this particular dowser was already programmed <laughs> by the previous person that bought this one for me um, because my other half bought it thinking oh wow that's amazing somebody else has tuned it and already programmed it up uh, no everyone will work differently with a dowser do not buy one that's tuned up if it is it's going to take a, a a hefty whack to get rid of the other pe persons tuning in their understanding of the universe their principles their ethics even are all going to be different and your dowser needs to be entirely tuned into you not into the way that somebody else works okay so that's really really important don't buy a pre-tuned one by one that you want to tune to yourself. And then ask the dowser, what is your yes? For me, the majority of dowsers um, just do this back and forth, yes and no. Okay, yes, and what's your no? Um, yeah, you, I think my other half paid more for it as well, bless them. So that's my no is side to side. I don't know if you can see that very well in the video, okay? I also doesn't mean maybe. And when I'm checking chakras and things, it will give me a whole range of different things, which mean different different reactions, which means different things for the energy. And obviously that will come with time of practice with getting to know your dowser. OK, um, he's <laughs> my dowser is just showing me what a, a healthy chakra would look like. So that's a, a round and round. Very well done. Very well done. Dowser. OK, so um, 
I work very well with dowsers. I found them very easy to work with. I always have done. Not everyone does. Not everyone's going to get on with a dowser. Um, some people are going to find that a pendant dowser just doesn't work for them, and that's okay. Something that's easy to clean is a really good idea in cleanse. So a crystal, preferably, would always be my go-to because it's going to maintain a high vibration. Um, woods and metals, I won't go for a brass one. I would go for a copper something like that, maybe um, a silver one, something with a higher vibration. Brass is quite a low vibration and there's a lot of brass ones out there, not my personal favorite. And when you go for the wood, check out what type of wood it is. Um, you know, is it from a sacred tree? Is it, you know, as in, is it a hazel? Something like that, okay? But personally, um, I know like a lot of men prefer them because maybe these are too pretty, um, the wooden ones. But if I was a guy looking for something a bit more, um, masculine and not pretty looking i'd probably go for a copper dowser that would be my recommendation oh yes my dowser agrees that's really kind of it um so you've got your dowser you've got it at home you've asked for a yes a no and a maybe which for me the maybe is kind of like a zigzag um from corner to corner Meh, can't quite tell you um so you need at least three because you want it to have a maybe option rather than a, just a yes and a no option okay um Dowsers can get interfered with very easily. So if you are checking your own energy and you have got a spiritual attachment, which isn't unusual, we all go around and we all pick up attachments sometimes time when they fall off, particularly if you're working in this field, they're going to be more likely to be attracted to you because of your energy or because you might know somebody that will help them pass easier. They might be looking for help. Um, you don't want, because the the it's checking your energy. And if you've got a spiritual attachment within your energy, it's going to go, oh, no, like, no, um, I'm not here. <laughs> OK, so it will interfere with it. Ask your dowser a question three times if you think it's been interfered with. On the third occasion, it will give you the wrong answer. My name is, my name is, my name is. OK, um, and it will give you um, a wrong answer, definitely by the third time, if not before then. OK, if it's been interfered with. Cleanse it at least once a month. And if I use it on clients, I cleanse it um, quickly in between clients, like a quick cleanse with like a wash or a spray or something like that on it, okay? And then a, a moon and an earthing cleanse once a month. Okay, so when um, you check your own energy, be aware <laughs> um, of the fact that anything within your aura, within your, your own um, energy is gonna affect it, even within your own house is gonna affect it. Have I got a spirit in my house? No, and you do, okay? That's a really common thing that comes up. I'm gonna check my own chakras, which is fine if you're somebody who's really happy to look at your shit with perspective. Not all of us are. So your dowels are gonna go, no, everything's fine. Like that's that thing that you don't wanna deal with, but we'll just ignore that. It's coming through your energy. So, you know, your energy will influence it. So I would say if you're checking your own energy, whether it is for um, attachments, whether it's for, you know, external energy coming in, um, or whether it's your own chakras and things like that, get somebody else. Have a friend where you check each other once a month, something like that. The other thing that gets checked regularly is, is somebody sending me shit? Is somebody sending me shitty energy? Okay. This is where um, a lot of mistakes happen because you need to understand the difference between conscious and unconscious with intention, without intention, um, with spell work, without spell work, and what type of spell work it is. So I always do three checks on my energy. Okay. One I do, which is the evil eye, is somebody sending me some proper shit. Not like, oh, they just looked at me fleetingly and gone, oh, God, I wish that I was able to go and do a video. Like, Rachel seems so confident when she does a video. You know those things that we all kind of, like, you might say you might be jealous for two minutes or yeah. oh, for two minutes? That's not an evil eye. An evil eye is somebody who's really peed off with you. They're really talking rubbish about you. Um, and they're sending out all sorts of negative energy. If that other person is somebody who's close to you, and or has got a big personality and or is an energy worker that's going to affect you more if you're an energy worker because that's how we transmit stuff okay um sometimes people are conscious of their jealousy and sometimes they're not so i always ask that if it's spell work it is normally important to get where it's coming from so that you can um you can sever the ties properly and that isn't for you to return it that isn't for you to be playing bat and ball and bat and stuff back with um questions i always ask is is this come from me originally have i said something have i upset them in some way did i make a fleeting comment and accidentally send out one fleeting tiny little bit of shit to them that they picked up on and they've checked their dowser incorrectly 
and the DAOs have told them that? Has it come from me originally? Those are questions that you need to ask. Um, is this a hex or is this a curse that's been sent to me? Two different types of spells, one, you know, with two different types of permanence on them. So what is, and then if you don't know about spell work, get somebody who does to help check your energy and help break it and sort it out. You will need outside help. So when you're checking, don't check your own energy, get other people to check your energy and be very specific as to what you're checking for. The other thing is you don't want to go for on a literal witch hunt. Who's been sending me shitty energy? Please don't do stuff like that. Um, if you need to find out because it's spell work, because you need to sever the ties in a certain way, then do, but deal with it as logically as possible or get somebody who's outside of you to deal with it as logically as possible because obviously it means you're becoming emotionally involved in it as well, okay? All of that stuff's really important. Um, you can use these for some really complicated stuff and do grids, but it's basically using it like you would do a Ouija board. So some people aren't comfortable with Ouija boards because they can be interfered with. Um, you might want to bless your conversation every time that you have that conversation. Um, this conversation is for my best personal interest and for my higher good, Dowser, um, every single time you go to do it. So you might want to do that in order to bless the conversation and to reset your intent and all of that type of thing every time you go to use it um, or go to use it for somebody else. So you can ask all sorts of spiritual questions. Um, be careful when you ask emotional questions, particularly about other people. A, you don't have permission. Unless you've got permission to read somebody else's energy, you can't. I mean, you can do something which might be affecting yours. For example, have they done for X on me? Yes, they have. Okay, then I can sort that out. Um, you might not be able to read why. You might be able to say, did I do something to them? Yes or no? No. Then it's their own shit for them to deal with. You can't read their energy. You haven't got permission to do it. Um, it's got to, you know if you're reading for somebody else if you've got people who say oh yeah I'll do a reading and I'll let you know with my dowser whether or not your boyfriend's cheating on you you've got to jump through the person you're reading for into their boyfriend that's a couple of loops and it's likely to go wrong or get misread or because you're going through um <laughs> hi Brad um it's uh, there we go got it by my lovely off to some other universe somewhere um I'm not trying to prove to you that dowsing works, by the way. Um, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to teach. So um, Brad saying, she's so full of rubbish. I can say, I'm not trying to keep my hand still. This is a demonstration. I'm not trying to keep my hand still and prove that dowsing works. If you're here to see if dowsing works, go to a different page. Um, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to teach and to let you know how to use them safely and how to use them properly. Um, if you're asking things like, is somebody annoyed with me? Is somebody upset with me? You know, et cetera. What have I done to upset them? It's going to, your idea of being upset might be somebody else's different idea. Your idea of being mad is going to be different to somebody else's idea of being mad. Your idea of being jealous is going to be different to somebody else's idea of being jealous. So you're going to apply your own emotional principles to somebody else. And again, this stuff messes up. This is a really good tool for working out, you know, which crystals should I use? Which um, which way does this ley line go? Um, is there any um, abnormalities in energy in my house um, or in their house? You know, it's really, really good for using for those types of things. I don't recommend you using for emotional questions because they're um, that because of the whole inconsistency with what you deem to be something and what some are they happy with me? Are they upset with me? Did I do the wrong thing? If you think you did the wrong thing, which I've heard people, do, I asked my dowser if I did the wrong thing and it said, yes, well, that's come from you. So you think you've done the wrong thing. Why do you think you've done the wrong thing? Well, I shouldn't have interfered because of this, this and this. Then that's fine. Then then you need to, you know, do what you need to do to, to play, um, to, you know, make things right in that relationship or to say sorry or whatever it is that you need to do. Don't use them instead of, instead of your intuition. Don't use them instead of um, doing like normal things that we do, practical things that you would do as a human. Don't do that. Don't use this instead of a conversation. Um, if you regularly pick up or somebody checks your energy and regularly picks up shitty energy from a friend, then reaching out to that friend, having those conversations, trying to sort things out is always the best way to do it. Um, yeah, right and wrong is very subjective. Um, yeah, the dowser is not absolutely Angela. The dowser is going to go, I, I don't know. I'll just give you my best guess because all I can give you is yes or no, um, which is why the maybe or the I don't know is a really good option to have with your dowser. 
Um, it's um, now all of these things are really, really important when it comes to understanding the limitations of a dowser. You know, do something real first of all, and then to tune into energetic stuff. If you've got a um, a friend who you need to sort some stuff out, then sort it out with them. You know, it might be that they've had a, you know, it's not evil eye, but there's, you know, you think, oh my God, I've got some shitty energy from them. Well, it's not anything too bad. We all talk shit about each other from time to time. It happens. It happens. We're human and we use it as a process to understand ourselves um, and to understand why the situation has affected us so much. And if we talk through it properly, we'll often go, okay, that's my problem. That's my problem with the situation that I need to sort out. Um, so it happens where we all talk about people, even if it's just because you're trying to sort out some stuff for yourself and understand why it's affected you so much. Give that same leniency to other people as well, okay? Um, hey, Sarah. Cool, Siobhan. Um, catch up with you soon. Um, so give that same leniency to other people. Intuition. You can use it to check your intuition. That's really, really good. I think I used to use this, this, and this crystal, or I think that chakra might be out, or I think this herb would be really good energetically, or you know, whatever it is that you need to do. Um, I think there might be something um, weird in the woods. Oh yes, there is, there's some weird energy center, or there's a board door that's open, what's it for? Blah, 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 blah. Use it to back up your intuition when you first start out, absolutely. I think I've got a spirit with me and I think it's so-and-so's uncle. Yes, okay. Um, I, you, know, you know, when you're practicing readings with friends, that type of thing, they will read spirits. So if you've got spirit in the room, you can ask the spirit to interact and, and actually um, give you information. So, you know, but use it to double check your intuition. Don't use it to override your intuition. Um, if you're paying for a reading from somebody and they're relying on this, they're probably not somebody with very much experience. So, you know, and which might be OK, you might be happy with that because you're not paying very much money or you're getting a free reading, in which case beggars can't be choosers. So, you know, expect somebody not to be using this and not to be using these type of tools if they're an experienced medium. OK, so be careful of getting to a point where you're overriding your intuition for this. It will start giving you false answers because your guides and spirit and your higher self are going to go, uh, 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 girl, you need to be trusting yourself trust yourself, um, don't trust anyone else. Um, why are you giving your authority over to a bit of crystal and you're not listening to your gut instinct? So it all comes in self-confidence, self-belief, self-worth, all of that type of thing as well. Really good tool in the first place to get it going. Don't rely on it long term. I use it for mostly for clients, um, for sorting out recipes, for magical things, um, all of that type of thing. Okay, now um, you can use it in a whole variety of areas in your home. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can have more than one if you use them for lots of different areas. So I'm going to get out my personal healing one. That's my one that I use for clients, my nice rose quartz one, which tends to get on very well with everyone because rose quartz as a crystal is really lovely and friendly and kind and gentle. She's not, she, she's not the softest rose crystal I've ever had. I used to have a one that I lost as I met for somebody new in a field once when I was doing dowsing work. Um, She's not as she's, she's got a bit. Her boundaries are a bit firmer on this one um, because I have got different personalities. Now, this lady's boundaries are very, very firm. So this is a tourmaline um, in quartz. And um, she's an amazing dancer. She's an amazing dancer. Um, I am many things. Um, she's just showing off. So she um, helps me with my own personal healing. Um, and for me, very much comes in the Banshee vibration as well. When I need to work with the Banshee, this is the dowser that I turn to. Um, I have also got um, another dowser that I use in terms of sacred knowledge, in terms of ancestral knowledge, in terms of um, ancestral healing. And he's a hefty energy. He's a Welsh stone. Um, and um, he's a hefty energy that doesn't really take any prisoners. He did crack, like he's cracked. There's nothing wrong with him being cracked. Got to remember that crystals are natural things with natural formations. So he just cracked one day um, and he's much happier this way. Like it wasn't, the shape that he'd been forced into wasn't natural for him, okay? We know that it looks pretty. If your dowsel's got a cracked end, as long as it's cleansed and as long as you're imbuing it and doing everything that you should do re re reasonably, um, sorry, on a regular basis, there's no reason why you shouldn't still work with these dowsers. He has got a hefty, hefty hell of an energy. My son chose this one for me. 
nothing else in the shop worked for me that day, um, only this one. And he deals with hefty stuff. Um, like I said, big ancestral healing, um, house clearance, that type of thing. Um, Jane has just said she's got a lapis one who will only pick cards. I, I love that you use them to pick cards and it makes total sense as well. Um, so get to, if you've got more than one dowels or you fancy more than one dowels, it's likely that you get on with them well and you're going to use them for different areas in your life as well. OK, I've got another one that I use, which is an out who, and I use she sits in my tarot cards all the time. And she's part of my physical toolkit that I take out with me when I go to see clients. So she's part of that physical toolkit um, and she sits um, with my tarot card. And if there's anything that I need for divining purposes, like, um, you know, set maybe dates or um, anything else where a client might ask me, and I go, I don't know. I can ask the dowser. I don't know how accurate a dowser is going to be, but I can ask the dowser and see what the dowser comes back with and allow the dowser to tune into the other person's energy, the other person's guides and see what it picks up with. So I have got a dowser that I use for that if I get stuck. I am very honest with clients. Um, if I don't know something, I'm not going to make it up. Um, and some people will say yes to a dowser and some people will say, no, if you can't pick it up, I'm happy with that. So, you know, the dowser is there as a just in case um, when I need it. So, like I said, if you want to know more, we are doing next Thursday in Real World Spirituality, our community, a more in-depth dowsing lesson um, where we'll be going through some you know, maybe some areas that people need help with and, and helping them with that with the dowels and showing them how to use it. Um, there's some newbies in that as well. So there'll be some basics as well as some much more advanced stuff. Um, and the crystal course is a week on Saturday in the Eastleigh um, Winchester area. If you're up for that, um, well, I'll show you how to use your dowser as part of a whole day of crystal healing in order to check people's energy for healing. Um, Jane has said that she is very sensitive and her obsidian one is your personal day-to-day -day one for me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's really important when we've got boundaries and we're dealing with clients that we keep some tools for ourselves and some tools for clients. So I'm going to leave you. Um, that's perfect. I want it to be about a half hour lesson. Um, if you have got, if you're watching on catch up or on YouTube or on Instagram, and you've got any questions that come up as it goes along, let me know. If you even anyone watching live, you think afterwards actually I've got a question, pop it on and let me know and I can come back to you at a later point. So thank you very much. I'm going to go. I love you and I'll see you later. Bye. -bye.